Uh, so I'm Tom Runyon uh, from Defense Unicorns. Uh, my most of my day job is helping design a GitOps environment for the Air Force. Um, they have a lot of the government in general spends a lot of time duplicating effort between teams, um, all with the same end goal about getting software into production. And there's a lot of um, a lot of commonality between how different groups around the DoD and the government uh, need to secure their environments so that they can get their ATOs uh, authority to operate, which is kind of the end sign off that the security officer uh, provides a team so that they can run their apps in production. Uh, I think early on platform one recognized that um, if we could come together as a group and just provide like a single set of configurations for everybody to use and leverage that everyone would get to where they need to faster and we'd be able to deliver software uh, more readily. So Big Bang is essentially a set of Helm charts that have been modified from upstream. Uh, they include some security fixes, adjustments based on best practices, um, as well as a lot of integration between how the pieces tie together. Uh, so one of the, for instance, one of the components that we deploy is Istio. Um, as part of the service mesh to ensure mutual TLS between all the components. Uh, but we also integrate how we deploy Istio with our logging stack so that we have standardized uh, logging messages with the uh, Jaeger deployment. So it comes pre-configured to send all traces to Jaeger on the sidecars. Monitoring recognizes how to uh, scrape all of the sidecars that are attached to all the workloads. Uh, we use a tool called Auth Service to in inject SSO in front of apps, even when they don't have it built in. So we're able to provide that as a service. Um, and we, we take all these pieces, we put them in their own Helm charts, and then we, we have this umbrella Helm chart, if you will, um, that essentially creates Helm release objects from the Flux API uh, and actually orchestrates the rollout of all these components. Uh, we chose Flux for several reasons. Uh, one of, I think, the most impactful that, that we've had is the uh, depends on field, as we can actually, in GitOps, declare, you know, how these things roll out without having to worry about sync waves and numbers. And if we put this one in that sync wave, do we have to move others around and how that all works on? Very clear to explicitly define when, what Helm chart depends on what other Helm chart, um, so that when you deploy the operator and the CRDs, you can then use the CRDs after and you don't get these these failure loops that'll eventually reconcile. Um, yep, so we're working with uh, Platform One, the Air Force Agency now, um, looking at several other customers looking to adopt Big Bang, um, Space Camp, uh, the Navy's got an effort doing um, something similar. We've been talking to the Army, um, Jake, some uh, other government agencies. Um, so we're, we're excited. Uh, I see a couple of people here from, from P1 as well, um, but See if anyone had any questions, um, something to talk to. Great. Walk through maybe some of the implementation details uh, and some of the features that we have. Uh, people are... We had a question. What what does COD stand for? COD? Is think, that uh, no, was, um, what? You, you mentioned an acronym a couple minutes ago. I asked him. If he, uh, maybe you said DOC or COD. CRD. C oh, okay. CRD. Yeah, a custom resource definition. Uh, so Kubernetes has native YAML objects that define essentially the state that you'd like the cluster to be in, and that's the job of the controller behind the scenes. Um, to kind of understand the landscape of your environment and the, the specifications of your, your CRD and, and reconcile the two so that everything's in alignment. Uh, so when Flux has a, a pointer to a Git repo um, and you say, yep, I wanna be tracking you know, the, the main branch on this repo, it's responsible for looking at the, the Helm chart that's been deployed and the Helm chart that's in that Git repo at that branch. And if the branch updates because there's a new version, it's responsible for understanding how to take that upgrade and then roll it out into your environment. Uh, so yeah, custom resource definition, it's basically how people are extending the Kubernetes API in a, uh, in a consistent way. And they're, they're used by Istio, uh, Elasticsearch Kibana's got CRDs, 
Jaeger uses one, Kiali's got an operator. Um, yeah, they're a very common paradigm. And you know, Helm charts and CRDs, while well, some people think they're you know, two different ways to manage what's on top of your environment, uh, people are often deploying operators with CRDs and letting some of the more nuanced control loops happen inside the operator logic. I can ask more questions if nobody else has. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm um, more excited to answer questions than ramble on my own. Well, um, so you're using this, you said, for Big Bang. Um, uh, and what, like, what you're, I don't, just so you know, I'm not, not the developers. <laughs> I'm, I'm like on the business development side of things at my company. Um, but knowing what Big Bang and Party Bus do, it seems like that customer orchestration that you were just mentioning that would also apply to uh, party bus um, because that understands more of a standard uh, kind of deployment right and, and big bang is more customizable so yeah. I'm actually surprised it's not like the reverse uh, of what you're describing and I was just curious are you using it for uh, party bus as well yes party bus is a managed version of, of big bang okay so okay. party so bus it's yeah. just another deployment it's a, a specific deployment that P1, okay. platform one, the, the group actually manages. Okay. Um, and if, if you look at the, the packages that are actually part of Big Bang, uh, okay. there's a lot of underlying things that every cluster should have to provide you know, your, your 853 controls or whatever you know, capabilities you need for everywhere. But then mm -hmm. there's a lot of functionality things that go on top. So uh, the, we manage a key cloak environment for doing identity management as part of P1. You may have used it um, if you've ever logged into to some of these repos. Um, that's a Big Bang package that's deployed on top of Big Bang Core. Um, Party Bus has another subset. Um, they've got kind of like the development environment. So GitLab, GitLab runners, twist lock scanning, anchor scanning is more Iron Bank, but um, they've got Fortify and some other you know code analysis tools. And then they've got their runtime environment that has uh, like a developer framework. So Argo is actually deployed with Flux in this scenario. Um, so there's kind of use cases for both GitOps engines here. Um, and some of that, those developer insights that they get with the Argo UI is, is really helpful for development teams who don't understand Kubernetes. Uh, but from the orchestration side, the uh, sysadmins who run the environment like the declarative nature of some of the flux components that we've been building. Um, and then P1 has other capabilities like uh, Jira and Confluence or elsewhere, but uh, Mattermost for collaboration. So there's a uh, Mattermost chat. Uh, there was a good blog post from Mattermost maybe a year and a half ago now about how they stood up Mattermost in like two months at the onset of COVID and were able to start having the development teams continue to collaborate together even though that they were now remote and they you know, got that capability there. So um, you could stand up your own Big Bang with Mattermost with a configuration file and kind of uh, jumpstart that, that, the management of that system. Uh, great, great. Um, so inside the, the core of Big Bang, um, Istio service mesh, uh, really complicated uh, for the most part. So we try to take the, the, a lot of the best defaults out of Istio and put them in the packages so that you as an end user don't have to really understand what an authorization policy is. To You just know that the way we've configured it by default has these Istio objects that ensure only the components that you want are talking to each other. And that if for some reason you got uh, system compromised, even though they're in there, the network layer would then further help isolate the environment um, with the uh, rules about who can talk to what, not just from the mesh layer, uh, but network policies as well, which are like the L3 connectivity rule sets that, that Kubernetes uh, provides by, by default. Uh, so we have a good service mesh in there and, and support for how data comes in and out of the system. Um, we have a tracing engine so that when app teams are using Istio, uh, which they do by default, um, 
in this environment, we get like an Istio proxy gets set up and actually sends trace data so that developers could look at um, you know how the, the network traffic is going between all the environments. Um, there's a whole monitoring stack. So you could see as a sysadmin, the infrastructure uh, and the, the resource usage throughout your system, uh, et cetera. Um, and we can show some of those, those dashboards. I've been working on this violations dashboard um, because we deploy uh, OPA gatekeeper to do a lot of the controlling about policy and what's allowed in the system and not. Um, so we're trying to provide a better experience for how you can actually audit and track those, those policy violations. And some are denied by default. Um, and this admin could overwrite for specific cases, but by default, you've got this, you know, good rule set to provide a, a safe space uh, for your, your applications to run. Um, and we can go into some of those if people have questions. Um, but there's lots of dashboards um, that kind of come in by default. Hey, Tom. So I saw a, a question in the chat from Pepe, and he says, what do you use Argo CD for? And how is that integrated with Flux? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, our platform one is like this managed DevOps environment that provides GitLab services for submitted code and then a, a runtime environment to automate the deployment into production. And there's a technical thing called a certificate to field and Justin will correct me if that's that's not right. Um, and it kind of a, approves this automation about how you get code from your Git repo into production. And part of the controls around that process are that the developers don't have access to the Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, so we need to provide some mechanism by which the development teams can kind of log into the system and see what's happening in uh, their, their, their app. So Argo CD is actually deployed by Flux as part of Big Bang. And then Argo manages the application object for each app team's application. Uh, and then in the UI, the, the app teams are able to log in, only see their um, apps, logs and metrics, um, they're able to restart their own pods and force sync so that you know they can reconcile more quickly when when changes happen upstream. Um, yeah, so it's a, a a tool that fits a slightly different need for how they want to. Party bus wants to provide GitOps and support for development teams running production apps, uh, but it's all orchestrated with Flux uh, under the hood, um, and we uh, configure via GitOps, how Argo gets deployed with uh, login SSO out in front, um, default credentials to the Git repos that it can pull from, um, and some of those network policies so that things in Argo uh, can't go outside. Um, we've got KMS key um, inheritance so that you can decrypt SOPS encrypted secrets from, from Git. Uh, so we pre-configure Argo with that um, as part of the GitOps engine uh, with Flux, and then uh, Argo kind of takes over from the app teams uh, from there. Um, yeah, where were we? yeah, so uh, it's just, you know, best practice, like just good defaults, I think is, you know, what do we want to emphasize there um, with Big Bang and how it's deployed? There's some flexibility in terms of what you can do under the hood. You can override anything. Um, and we actually provide post renders to, on all our charts uh, so that they're easy to adjust when they're not exactly what you need. Um, but for the most part, we find our, our customers are, are using the default uh, configurations plus a couple, you know, like what's your host name going to be for your virtual service or um, so that you can kind of see, see what's going on. Um, any other questions? I see some friendly names here. I'll just remind everyone if you don't want to unmute yourself and come on camera, feel free to type in your question in the chat and I'll be happy to ask Tom on your behalf. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Thank you. I didn't see chat because it 
when you yeah, share no screen worries. it, you like just I'm monitoring, so I'll take care of it for you. I don't see any other questions. I got a question for you, Tom. So oh, um, there you go. The, the, everything you're showing with uh, Flux, um, is that a service that you provide you know, for your Platform One customers or do they have access uh, as well to make configuration changes um, yeah. or, or is it depend, is it like a, it depends situation with the, with the customer you're supporting? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, we at Platform One help groups run their own version of party bus essentially their own so we help them get the the git repo set up that actually manages their their entire cluster and stack um, and then they're responsible for like the day-to-day -day git ops and sre support of their their environment uh, but what we want to do is provide the best uh open source like anyone can come and download this this big bang package and there's some quick starts in here and you can get started and actually try it out on probably a beefier machine than your regular desktop because it's got Elasticsearch on there. Um, but anyone can come in and, and do it themselves. And then we want to provide like as platform one, the long-term support of Big Bang, the product, because we use it on every day. So we're going to be actively making sure that versions of software are up to date. Uh, there's no bug fixes. It has the capabilities that we want. And then we're adding features in terms of uh, I think there's some vault integration going in in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, uh, to allow vault be deployed as well so that you can do better secret management in your CI CD pipelines. Um, but, but we would just want to provide the product and then kind of let you run it with some, some expert guidance if you need that. Um, so we, we don't want to be the managed person there, kind of like running your infrastructure. We want you to run your own infrastructure um, and kind of do it. And we will, but we want to make that as easy as possible by, by you know, building out this product and, and we dog food it ourselves. So we're, we're hopefully doing learning those lessons early and trying to um, uh, move that on. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, health checks for depends on. So we mentioned the depends on early on uh, as one of the features we like. Uh, because Flux's native Helm uh, Go package is like how it how it does Helm, we are offloading any health check status for the Helm charts to Helm itself. So the the, the question was about for those maybe watching the recording, um, you know, how do we do health check dependencies um, for the depends on feature in, in Flux? We really offload everything to Helm itself uh, for that. So there are limitations on what Helm can actually determine as healthy in terms of if you have other logic that you want. So for instance, if you are deploying a CRD, a, a, an instance of a CRD as part of your chart, if your CRD doesn't talk to Helm nicely in terms of a, letting it know that it's healthy, uh, Flux will just continue on before things actually become Come stable. So there's definitely uh, some nuances there on the interaction between uh, the objects themselves and, and Helm. And it's probably a good thing that we're not doing anything over the top there because we want to have all the Helm support we can and kind of follow the upgrade path of Helm itself and not try to duplicate any of that. However, on the customization side, um, the, the Flux customization objects, you can define your own health checks. Um, so one me me method to do what, you're, what you'd want to do in terms of providing extra checks on top is to wrap your Helm release in a, in a customization, which is a little um, dirty, but there, there are workarounds for that, um, but I probably don't advocate for them. Thanks, Jayla. All right. Uh, and if you go back to the screen I think we had up before this I just had one question uh one I had on before that hmm. uh oh the package list maybe oh yeah. yeah yeah that's what I was wondering so if you go up to packages so mm -hmm. these these are for the packages those aren't referring to like um application packages or libraries right these are when you say packages you're talking about like the full 
These are these yes, are sir. the helm charts that Big Bang the product deploys as part of its orchestration. Um, it. So it deploys several things in every cluster. So Istio stack, monitoring Jaeger, Elastic for logging. Uh, there's an auditing tool, and then there's like these add-ons that you can enable depending on what your particular use case is. Yep. I wouldn't expect anyone to stand up a Big Bang core because there's it doesn't do anything. It just provides the controls needed to get something running in production that does something functional. Um, so the, the functional things are like, oh, maybe I'm deploying a, a central auditing tool with Twistlock or a key cloak or a, a development environment or a chat, or it does all of them. Um, so then you add and just enable those by, by default or Got optionally. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so Jayla, the, there's a good in the um, customized controller, there's actually a, a real good example of the health check. Um, it's here. Yeah, so you can uh, define explicitly the objects you want to be waiting on um, as part of the customization object. So if your CRD was supposed to have a pod behind it, fronting, like actually handling the workload that's that's defined by the by the CR, the um, you can actually put that in there as part of the yes, thanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. I see migration. How is that handled for Flux versions? Um, migrations on here. I believe this is from Flux V1 to Flux V2. Um, we never used Flux V1, um, so I, I, I can't really speak to the, the migration effort. Um, the original version of Big Bang was uh, Argo based exclusively um, and switched to Flux as the underlying for the, the native Helm support. Um, because there were some charts that did not get uh, rendered correctly in Argo speak um, and, and had trouble deploying, specifically GitLab, had some very strange artifacts with uh, the post install hooks uh, as part of the chart. And when Argo tried to duplicate all the effort of uh, Helm into their own language, uh, there ended up being um, some conversion problems, uh, which is why I appreciate the native uh, Helm support that, that Flux provides because we don't have to worry about, well, I can do it in Helm install, but does Flux do it right? Yeah, I was just uh, making a note too. If anyone has any uh, migration issues or wants to chat with us from the Flux team a little bit more about migration, we have migration workshops for folks um, from the Flux side, not from the WeWork side. We just happen to work at WeWorks. Um, so yeah, we're more than happy to sit down with you and walk you through any any issues that you might have, talk to you about uh, anything. So definitely ping us and let us know. Hey, thanks, Tom. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna take yeah. off, but- uh, Take care, enjoy uh, California. Yeah, sure, we'll come back <laughs> soon. Thank you, thanks everyone. Thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions for Tom? King, did I muted you just to avoid the background noise of the booth there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you have a question, please unmute yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, Tom, um, if since it doesn't look like there's any other questions, is there anything else that you wanted to cover or? Uh, no, no, just okay. uh, wanted to.
give people an idea of what we were working on. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if, if anyone has any last minute questions, please type them in to the chat or unmute yourself and ask away. Mike, I saw that you unmuted yourself. Did you have something? Yeah, so it, hello. So, so if we put uh, Big Bang in, I'm over at Raytheon. It, it, so are we gonna start with Flux? Is that what we're saying now? Uh, there's a, a precursor step to installing Big Bang that you have to install Flux. Um, and if you're familiar with the P1 ecosystem, there's Iron Bank, the yep. container hardening. Uh, we have Iron Bank images for Flux as well. Uh, there's an install script uh, that kind of gets us started because uh, we. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, you got to make the pull creds in there, um, and we've also patched the upstream Flux um, objects. Um, these are documented as additional security best practices for the Flux containers, uh, but we actually put them in as default for, for what we're, we're building. So um, like the uh, security context, you know, make, fixing that on, on, on what we know, read only root file system, like no privilege escalation, like all those things that containers should have, but most upstream um, charts just leave out. Um, and, you know, Flux does a great job documenting it, but uh, we wanted our default best practices to be there. So yeah, you do a install on, that with your iron bank creds um, and then you do a, a big bang install after that yeah so we're, we're looking at like just doing something off of our network and then pushing it to air gap yeah yeah, yeah um uh, we've got a air gap utility that we've been working with for the navy doing something similar um called zarf um so we're using big bang essentially and then with one of the config objects for Zarf, you kind of build up all the Git repos you need, the images you need, and then kind of creates this bundle. And then when you go to the other side, it'll start K3s on your node, it's install a Git server, install our Docker registry, and then de deploy with Flux um, kind of the rest of the stack on that. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely happy to, to talk about AirGap. Um, obviously the DoD is exceptionally interested in getting low side developers uh, and then porting their code to high side and making sure it actually runs. Exactly. Um, there, yep. There's always a ton of problems with, you know, versioning of images and, uh, you know, they've got eight year old software and no one uses it anymore. And, uh, but it's critical, like, uh, so that, that consistency piece about how you can develop on low, get everything you need and build and deploy uh, on the high side is uh, helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Yeah. So we're, we're finally at that point where we're just got all our stuff together and our people, <clears throat> which was the main thing. So we can start because we went through the whole, you know, the same as you, the P1, party bus, Black Pearl, Blue Ocean, mm -hmm. Kraken, yeah. you know, back and forth. We we're just trying to, to package it up so we could give it to our engineers so they could do this 20 times in a row, you yeah. know. And not yeah. feel like it's 20 different uh, times in a row. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, that consistency piece is very important, especially when you're running in a place that doesn't have Kubernetes experts and you want to build up this utility and run it on a, a boat somewhere. And like, let's say you don't want that boat to be connected to anything and you got no way to get a Kubernetes engineer to actually fix it. If it goes down, like you need that reliability to uh, really ensure that that what you're running there works. So it's gotta be the same thing that's in the cloud that you're developing in um, and gotta have that consistency piece. So agree. Yeah, that's, that, that's our biggest thing is just making sure we're at the same code level. We didn't wanna fork, you know, yeah. 20 times. No, no. Um, and I, I like how the examples of how you overlay values on top of Big Bang with Flux and the Helm release objects really provides you the API space you need to, to deploy what you want consistently with the same like artifacts, just with different runtime variables for like what your DNS is. And um, maybe if you have anchor deployed or not, or, or some other tool, um, just that consistency piece that kind of, you can still do GitOps with the, the product that is Big Bang um, uh, and have that flexibility. Which is nice. 
And, and did you ever like run into an info sifter it, it, using this at all? Uh, Does that ring any bells? No, sifter? Yeah. Like S I F T R, yeah. info sifter? No. No? No, no. no. All right. Yeah. No, this, this is great. <clears throat> and what, if you were sitting down. Mike, I think we've lost your audio no and video. Uh, 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 I'm assuming, Tom, you're getting the same audio. Yeah, back audio okay. Yeah. yeah, we lost you for a second there, Mike. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> if you want to try and repeat the question. <laughs> My connection's unstable, I think. <laughs> I, I can hear you now, so. All right, well, that, that, that's close. <laughs> so how long would it take to um, just put up a, a big bang instantiation? Um, we had a new kernel come in a P1 and went from new computer to a, a running demo of big bang in 40 minutes. Nice. Um, so, uh, Take that for what you will. He's he's a technical person, so it's not like totally unwieldy. Um, but yeah, the, it's it's supposed to be repeatable, and we're working on that adoption and like getting zero to production. Um, so there's definitely some opportunities to improve there, uh, but it's getting better and better in terms of you know how to get it started. Um, I know developers that are working on some of these packages that tear down and deploy Big Bang dozens of times every day. Like they're just practicing the install, making sure things are coming up healthy. The upgrades are working, so they're testing that. We have that in CI. Um, but yeah, they're, once you get an EKS cluster up, like, uh, you know, 20 minutes, it's good. deploying Elastic is probably the longest piece of that. Yeah, we were gonna send some more people like the Catalyst Campus, you know, <laughs> see if that could- training there. Get some training. Yeah, um, definitely feel free to reach out. We can kind of get you connected to the right people that can start onboarding. This is my. Yeah, well, well Bob Slaughter sent me over here. So I figured that'd be a good start. He said, talk to Tom. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we could definitely get you set up and deployed and just to try it out and see what it looks like to, to manage it and run it. and. See the capabilities that you might need. Where do you work out? Are you in Colorado? Uh, Pennsylvania, north of Philly. Uh, yeah, my hometown. Yeah. Abington, Abington, Pennsylvania. So. Right. Willow yeah. Grove Air Force Base, right there. Yeah, I'm in Doylestown, so that's very close. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All Boris, right. had, Boris had a quick question about OpenShift and the other distros. Yeah, so we at uh, I have deployed. Big Bang on uh, Rancher, RKE2, K, K3s, uh, Convoy, EKS, AK, AKS, GKE. Uh, people have deployed it on OpenShift. Um, I, I personally have not. There are some nuances there. Uh, we had to add CNI, Istio CNI support um, because of how OpenShift does certain things. Um, there's conflicts with the monitoring stack at times when OpenShift has their own Prometheus deployed, and we're trying to also deploy a Prometheus uh, that we have to work through. Uh, but currently, none of our primary customers are using OpenShift. Um, so, you know, the, the, the Jake J A I C team um, runs OpenShift, um, and they are they are working through some of those internally and trying to make sure. But the goal is not to be uh, to be vendor agnostic on this. You know, we don't want to lock anybody in on like, well, we only work with, you know, this company's distro. So you gotta, you gotta do that. And now it's a bundled deal. Like we want the flexibility there to go from a managed Kubernetes, you know, in the cloud to a local K3S server uh, because you're working on edge and have that same interface down. Uh, so your app doesn't really know any different, you know, and that, that consistency piece and vendor agnostic piece is uh, real important to what we're doing. Um, similarly, we're trying to make sure that the, core baseline of Big Bang um, can all be open source. So we're looking to try to provide some <coughs> open source alternatives like runtime defense 
Uh, right now we have Twistlock in there. Fantastic tool, does, does a lot of great things, uh, but it's license only. So we really want to uh, look at Falco for some of that runtime defense and see if we can pair that up with Gatekeeper and provide something comparable to make sure that people can run it and be safe and not uh, have to pay for a license there. So yeah, good question, just of course, thank you. Fantastic. All right. Well, Tom, really appreciate it. Thanks for taking uh, 35, 40 minutes out of your day to chat with That's us great. here at the Flux booth. We really appreciate you. Um, and yeah, if you have any, any other questions, uh, I think, Tom, can you be found on CNCF Slack as well? Yes. Is that correct? Run, run, run in TR. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, thanks right. for all the questions, everyone. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.